Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Does dissatisfaction with Allah's decree affect one's faith? This depends on what exactly uh, the circumstance meant. So dissatisfaction with Allah's decree. Does this mean that something happened? As an example, somebody close to you had passed away and it hurts and you feel upset about it. If this is the case, this does not necessarily mean that your iman is, is at flow. If dissatisfaction with Allah's decree uh, leads the believer to say, why did this happen to me? I don't deserve this. Why did Allah do this to me? Now, of course, this is a different issue altogether. A believer does not need to take the situation that they are in and uh, just accept it as it is. A believer can strive and make dua and uh, aspire to remove themselves from that situation. But the believer knows that everything is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good and the bad, nothing can happen except by the permission, the power and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ridha bil qada is part of the believer's um, toolkit in life. Ridha means to be pleased bil qada with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why for the believer, when something happens, they say, Qaddar Allahu wa ma sha fa'ala. It is as Allah decreed and whatever Allah wants, He does. Right? When something happens and we find dissatisfaction with the outcome of something, again, it's not about the feeling of I want to resist what just took place or I'm not satisfied with uh, with where I find myself currently. That's not the issue. The issue is how do you respond to that, right? If as a believer you respond by turning to Allah and making dua, oh Allah, I'm really unhappy about what had taken place. Please change the situation for me. Oh Allah, grant me better than this. Oh, you know, this is fine. This is absolutely fine because the believer is now turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if what you mean by dissatisfaction is I'm displeased with Allah or I'm blaming Allah for something that I feel should not have happened, now uh, this, this is problematic. And if you find yourself in that situation, the best way to address that is to go and renew your faith. Go and renew your iman. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. La ilaha illallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-adiyu al-azim. Remind yourself that you are not in charge. I'm not in charge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge. But still, you can make, you, you, you can certainly turn to Allah and make dua. Oh Allah, remove this from me. Remove this situation. Allah, change what has happened here. Uh, you don't have to just, anything that happens, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, thank you for taking this person away from me. Oh Allah, thank you for ending the marriage. Oh, no, we don't, we don't have to do that. So it's all about our, our response. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I mean, this comes from, the Quran as well. If we look, for example, there are many verses that speak about this. But if one looks, for example, at Surah Al Fajr, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim, Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Wal Fajr, Wal Fajr, Wal Layalin Ashri, Wal Shafi, Wal Watri, Wal Layli Ida Yasir, Hal Fi Dalika Qasam Al Lidi Hijr. Alam Tara Kaifa Faala Rabbu Kabi Ad, Iramadati Al Imad, Al Lati Lam Yuklaq Mi Thluha Fi Al Bilad, Wa Thamud Al Lidi Najabu Sakhra Bil Wad, Wa Firauna Di Al Autad Al Lidi Natagaw Fi Al Bilad, Fa Aktharu Fi Hal Fasad, Fa Sabba Alayhim Rabbu Ka Sauta Adab, In Rabba Ka Labil Mirsad. فَأَمَّا insanu. I recited all of that just to get to this middle portion here. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا Humans, they've been created as such that when Allah honors them and blesses them and uh, gives them, then they say, رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا My Lord has blessed me and honored me. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي when Allah Ta'ala tests him and he restricts that person's rizq وَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ He restricts the rizq a bit فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا Then he says, my Lord has disgraced me. So notice here, both instances are tests from Allah. When Allah honors the person, when Allah graces the person with gifts and blesses them with abundance, that's a test. And when, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala restricts and keeps away, that's also a test. Two different natures of the tests, but they are both tests. 
And what's more important is the response of the person. In the first instance, the person said, Rabbi Akraman, so he's attributing the good to Allah. But in the second instance, he says, Rabbi Ahanan, now my Lord has disgraced me. I don't look at it as a test anymore. I don't look at it as, what can I do? What can I change? How can I improve? I blame it on Allah. Well, Allah protect us. Then Allah averts our attention from that and he says, Kalla, balla tukrimun al yatim. No, don't blame it on Allah. You have not honored the orphan. You have not fed um, the, the, or, or encouraged the, the feeding of the poor. Uh, and you love to consume wealth and you love to you know, be materialistic and pursue worldly pursuits. So don't, as a believer, look at negative aspects as, oh, Allah has abandoned me, Allah is this, Allah is that. No, instead, change your circumstance by taking action and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not blaming Allah. And I hope that this, uh, Allah, has uh, somewhat resolved your, your, your question because, again, when you ask, you need to be specific. What exactly does being dissatisfied mean? And what, the, what we really do consider is not what had taken place but how we respond to that, and Allah knows best. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah